crafters, welcome in to Guy's Craft 2. My name is John, and as you can see, we are in the holiday Halloween season. So we flipped the house this weekend, and now we're into um, adding, I guess, some essentials. Unfortunately, you can't see because we don't have the other camera hooked up yet, although we've been trying to work on that for weeks now. But uh, the table's actually covered with a lot of floral designs that we have purchased. Some of those we got from Timu. These are plastic, so they're not the nice silk stuff that we get at Joann's or uh, Michael's or um, at home. But those silk ones, some of those, we'll probably say for our biggest, our bigger jack-o'-lanterns, but for the smaller ones like this one, you know, perfect is to actually use some of these small plastic ones because we plan on putting some of these actually out on our screened in porch. So all we've done so far is we purchased this cute little jack o' lantern. It actually came from uh, Oriental Trading. Of all places, Oriental Trading is where we found these. They light up. They came with battery and that. What we're going to go through is actually talk to you a little bit about how we uh, decorate, how we put together these type of arrangements. Now, I will tell you, I've cheated a couple of years ago and we bought a floral uh, cutter, wire cutter. It's called the Easy Cutter. I think we ended up getting it off of um, Amazon just because I got tired of trying to do it uh, with the uh, diagonal cutters. The diagonal cutters will work. Uh, the problem is when you get into some of these heavy, heavy ones, you either have to break them down or you have to have something a little bit more heavy duty. But one of the things you want to think about is when you're building out your designs, your top should always be at least one and a half times your base. So when you're looking at something like this, it uh, naturally tells you we want to go about one and a half times the base, and we want to fill this out. Now, I am using the green foam. I just bought a case of it at our uh, local floral shop. Again, we have a um, resale license, so it makes it easy for us sometimes to just go in and buy wholesale uh, because we do use a lot. I tend to do a lot of um, arrangements in that. In fact, if you look on our um, Guys Craft 2 Facebook page, you'll see a lot of the Halloween decorations that we just finished putting out. But I'm going to start with this. I actually cut this brick down from the original size. I've shaped it a little bit. I do use a styrofoam uh, knife. And again, I bought it off Amazon. Amazon just, you know, sometimes just has those things that we want. I wanted to trim around it just a little bit, and I did take a little bit of the height off. Uh, just to be consistent. I will tell you, uh, working with this type of styrofoam, it is going to be a mess, and so just expect that. So when I get done, I get to wash up, and Curtis comes in and sweeps and does all the good stuff. So we're going to start something as simple as what is your center design? What should that look like? So I am using this black to be the center design today. I'm going to cut that down where I think makes sense this design and that gives me just a good base to start. So I've got the small jack-o'-lantern here. I probably want to go offset just a little bit because I know that this jack-o'-lantern actually has the curly cue on top and when you see all of a sudden I've got a nice piece um, getting started in there. I found some fall, and so I'm going to mix some of the fall in with the jack-o'-lantern uh, pieces, because this one being a small one, I want it to be more of a fall transitioning into Halloween, and not so much just that Halloween arrangement. Don't be afraid to get in there, pull these, make these uh, what you want them to be. As you can see, I've got a lot of different uh, pieces. And again, I'm cutting down just to the point where there's individual wires here because I don't want to deal with each of these individually. So I'm doing that, doing 
the one notch just below. If I went above, I'd end up having to deal with all of these as individual pieces. And that is absolutely not what I'm wanting to deal with today. So I'm quickly getting this top filled in, starting to see some real nice shape on here. So now that I feel like I've got the top going, what I need to start focusing on is how do I incorporate all of this and start covering these bases. So with that, I bought a lot of different pieces and you just want to start looking and saying, okay, what makes sense for small leaves uh, to be in there to help you cover up to kind of camouflage what's down there in the base. So I can look at something as simple as this piece. Again, pull this apart a little bit once you get it and, you know, and kind of work it. And I'm going to put this more down here in the center. And now I'll start building out that side. And now we're going to come around the sides and do some of the same things that I had just done with the top. But now at a whole different angle, right? And again, this is just cheap plastic pieces. A few of them fall off, just toss them in the garbage because that's not what I'm really looking for. I am just looking to start getting some nice filler in here so I can start working around that bottom to get all of these filled in, put together. So again, just start, keep working that in, making those pieces work for you the way you want them to. It, I will tell you it's easier if you branch them out before you actually uh, put them inside your um, arrangement. I can tell you, I only used one black, so I can see very quickly. I don't have enough black in that arrangement. So I'm going to do some, uh, add another piece to help get that balanced. And again, I want to work this here. Before I put it into the styrofoam. If you try to work it too much when you get it into the styrofoam, you'll end up pulling the styrofoam apart, and that's not what you're looking to do. Try to find yourself a new hole each and every time. Get it in there, and then work it around. See? To be the base, to be the pieces that you want. Now I can look here and tell that I'm already heavy on the back side because it doesn't even want to stand up anymore. So I want to get one more piece and I probably want something maybe a little bit more rustic. Rust. And so I am going to add this piece in. And again, work it out before you put it in. And that now helps you balance in all of these pieces. All right. So the next thing we'll want to do is actually go through and now put some um, covers around to make sure that we're covering up uh, these, these pieces, right? So I'm going to set this piece aside for now. And I want to start looking at what can we do with some of these uh, bigger jack-o'-lanterns. This one is not uh, lit up. And so, again, I bought some of these. These are called blooms. So I think blooms came from Michaels. And so I will post a couple of pictures on here. Whoops. As we get these off, I will tell you taking some of these tanks off gets really frustrating. So again, just straight down the middle, right? So there's a good start to what we're looking for. And just start working in 
those pieces. So I like these big pieces that fill in real quick for me. Right? Look how great that is. And this is probably a better one that I should have started with because I think you can see it on air a whole lot better. Um, let my scissors go. And again, look at some of the odds and ends that you can add in to give your piece a little bit more character. Right now, I added this in just to give it some lift and height. And then what I want to start doing is thinking about how do I start giving this backside some visibility too. So again, I like these leaves because they fold in really nice and they will really help fold in that piece. So if you look, you can see all of this starting to really come together. I've got one hole here that I've got to do something with. Let's see if we can do something a little bit different. Maybe we'll go in and add... I think we're going to add another set of flowers, but I'm going to cut this because I want this one to come in lower because I'm wanting to give some coverage, right? I don't want everything to be all high, and then I've got all this styrofoam to deal with later. So let's drop this in. Yeah, you see it's starting to give me some nice shape. And now what I've got to figure out is how am I going to camouflage and cover uh, this piece. And that's where I've got whoa, glitter pieces, things like this, that I can actually work in, that I can come back through, right, and give me some characters here. Whoa. And here. All right, that piece is not going to go. Let's just cut it and make that the length I need it to be. And again, see, I am just working all the way around the bottom right now with these pieces and just doing this on the fly. No pattern, no thought, just seeing what makes sense to me, what I like, what looks good. I know where I want to put this out on the table. So even though these pieces hang way out, they're more of what I'm looking for in this type of arrangement. And so I'm going to start working these black pieces back in. Cut some of those. Oh, over here. So I can start getting those. And again, see, I'm giving some height, some width, but I'm filling out those pieces and really allowing the arrangement to come into its own. And then what I'm going to have to do is look at pieces like this, like the eucalyptus, and start, sorry about that, working around the bottom to start camouflaging this green. So you're not going to see a big piece of green foam and end up being really unhappy. Now, in the past, I have, you can spray paint some of this foam uh, to give it a different, uh, to help you know, camouflage it to kind of help hide it. I find uh, that that ends up being more of an issue too because foam doesn't like to really be painted. They do make this in white other than green. But um, again, I think if you just take your time and just keep adding pieces in here, you'll be able to camouflage that and get that filled out so that it covers in that everything looks really good. If you look at these small pieces such as this, those are great pieces to get down in here to help you hide 
those type of um, the hide and cover that type of um, the phone and those type of things. I do like my arrangements to be a full 360 around. So you'll see uh, that when you uh, ever picked up or were around to look at one of our arrangements, I think our back sometimes looks prettier even than the um, front side. And that's just because that's a focus for me. I like that um, both of them look the same. Really like this piece that we bought from um, at home a while back. In fact, we went back, we put this in some of our wreaths uh, that we did and then came back and actually uh, bought a couple of more because I wanted to work at least one of these into an arrangement. I don't think it's going to be this one, but again, just keep working around, keep working, keep stuffing, and you can see on the camera, this is really starting to take shape, really starting to get full. All right, with that said, that is what we're going to be spending the afternoon on. If you have questions, comments, please feel free to reach out. Love to hear what uh, your thoughts are, know what you're working on for Halloween, um, and drop us a line in the comments below. So my name is John. You landed on Guys Crack 2. And if you like what you hear, give us a thumbs up for today's video. If you uh, haven't subscribed, please do so. We love our subscribers. We're getting close to that 300 mark, which is just amazing to us. Uh, we do all kinds of crafting, so today just happened to be, I wanted to work on some floral arrangements. Uh, I've got stuff that we need to put on the long arm. I've got plenty of quilting projects that we need to work on. So you never know what our next video is going to be. If you want to be notified when that video pops up, hit that bell and you'll be notified next time. But until next time, happy crafting.